there continues to be a narrative pushed around Hugh Freeze press conferences. I want to address it. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the bug, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Yes, sir. We're back. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Rush, a.k.a. Charlie Five. Happy Monday. We are a bye week. It's bye week. There's nothing that going on in football this week uh, for Auburn. So we are going to battle through it, and we are going to uh, break uh, break things down, see what the see what's going to happen, what we think could happen towards the end of the year uh, to finish out the season. But today, I want to talk further about this uh, these press conference narratives that I feel like are pushed that are just patently false. And I can't tell if it's just anger or if we're truly being this dishonest uh, with ourselves and with with others. So it's uh, something I want to dive into. But before we get started, we got to give a shout out to mybookie.ag. Use coupon code next round for a double up deposit bonus. Give them anything up to $500 and they'll give you another $500 back on top to play with. They'll match whatever you deposit up to $500. So, That means, hey, football, NFL, there's even some playoff baseball left, uh, all kinds of different sports. You could have essentially a risk-free bets uh, for for quite for quite a while. I guess as much as you want on that of that bonus, uh, just by going to mybookie.ag and using coupon code next round. I told you to hit Auburn on the under this past, uh, not under, hit Auburn to cover the spread this past weekend, and they obviously did that. Hopefully, some of you took uh, advantage of the double up deposit bonus and, and, and scored big. So check them out, mybookie.ag. So yeah, there continues to be a narrative, um, and I think I think I know why, and we'll address why at the end. But there continues to be this narrative that essentially Hugh rolls into a press conference and takes zero blame and just starts throwing players under the bus. I've heard the term throw players under the bus under the bus so much that I could throw up. <laughs> it's 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 it, it is every it's every single press conference. It's taking a sound bite, it's taking a clip and then framing that as if it's the whole press conference. Framing that as if Hugh walked in, sat down and just started railing on everybody that sucked but him. And, and and if you are a casual, you know, scroller on, uh, you know, social media, if you're just a casual reader of, of Auburn sports, that's what you would that's what you would take away because those are we've become sort of a soundbite. We're not sort of become we've become a soundbite society. We're not even become we are a soundbite society. And I think for the most part, the the way that journalism works now and the way that the media works now is hey sound bites are are what you have to have for engagement sound bites are what you have to have to create conversation and unfortunately you couple that with the 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 losses that we've had and that continues to be uh the deal uh and I just don't think if you watch the press conference, I, I would challenge you to go watch the post game press conference. It's only 10 minutes. It's not even that long. And see if you come away with the same – see if you wa- watch that press conference and see if you come away with the same opinion. If you think that it's just Hugh going in there uh, from start to finish, throwing people under the bus, I'd lo- I challenge you to go watch that press conference and, and see if you come away with the exact same opinion. When you, when you talk about Hugh taking blame uh, or, or saying that the coaches deserve a lot of the responsibility – this is how he started the press conference off. Okay. Typically, he'll come in and he'll have an opening monologue, uh, whether it be sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short, but this is how he started the press conference off. Okay. I'm talking about within five to 10 seconds of saying it was a tough game. We really tried hard uh, or we really hoped we would pull that out. We didn't, blah, 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 blah. Within 10 seconds, this is what he says We're not playing winning football. And I'm glad it's an open week. We as coaches have to figure out how to coach them harder 
to not make critical errors at critical times. Okay. So that what within within 10 seconds, he said during this open week, the coaches and myself have to figure out the errors that they're making. There, there are some errors that are being made, but it's on us to fix it. And, and he addressed it within the first 10 seconds. We're going to spend this whole open week figuring out how to coach them harder so they won't be in those positions to make those errors. Uh, I mean, that is how you start off the football. That is how you start off the press conference, talking about the football game. We're not playing winning football in critical moments, and it's our job. It's my job. He 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 reiterated that. We're not playing winning football. It's our job. It's my job to get that fixed. What is that? What does that sound like to you? If that's at the beginning of your monologue, does that sound like you're you're walking into a press conference throwing people under the bus left and right? Does that sound like you're going in there blaming everybody but yourself? Doesn't sound like it to me. I mean, that is literally the quotes within the first 10 seconds of the press conference. Just just go Google it. Just go Google it. Watch the video and see if you come away with a different opinion than what I just than than what I'm stating right now. Unless you're, it's it's honestly, it feels like we're being uh, dishonest with our, we're being dishonest uh, a little bit. And again, I'm going to get back to, I'm going to get to that at the end. Another thing, he was asked about fighting for 60 minutes and he made a comment. And this was something that was taken out of context, I feel like. He was asked about taking uh, the fight for 60 minutes and he said, honestly, I I wish we would have fought a little bit harder. Uh, And he said a few things and he said, it really goes back to us coaching them better. That's how he wrapped it up. So he said, he said, yeah, I do wish there was it was a little bit tougher to for them to put the game away. I wish we would have fought a little bit harder whenever uh, you know the game was on the line or it, it, right there at the end. But he said at the end, it really goes back to us coaching them better. I mean, again, it seems like almost every single answer that part's left off. Well, when it, when it's in discussion. Uh, of talking with everybody else when, when when you're talking about this press conference these little things um these little things are 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 always left off we just completely erase them we completely erase them from our memory we've painted the picture now so the media has painted the picture and, and this is how this is how we uh we don't want to do the effort to go back and look at the whole transcript or we don't want to do the effort to go back and watch and, and, and form our own opinion we're going to digest the sound bites, and that is the narrative we're going to run with. Talking about the rest of the season and coaching the players, you know, p- coaching the players tougher towards the end of the season. He says, I've never met a great player that didn't like to be coached harder. And that's what we as coaches have to do. We have to work harder. We have to coach harder. Uh, I mean, multiple times throughout the press conference, there were times, and, and I'm going to read in just a second, even the fourth and one play, there are times where he gives a, crit- a critique that is an answer to a question, and then he ends it with, that's on us. We have to coach that better. Uh, over and over and over again, he starts off the press conference taking the blame. He, he takes the blame at the end of multiple questions. The the narrative that Hugh Freeze is not taking blame and blaming everybody else is simply not true. It is simply untrue. There is no, there's really not even a shred of truth to it. There's not one percent shred of truth to it. Uh, now, if you want him to just not answer questions, that's one thing. If you just want him to say it's on me every single time he's asked a question, I mean. That'd be a pretty boring press conference. You'd get nothing out. Uh, uh, you wouldn't really learn a lot about what goes on and what's the ins and outs of the football game. And I think probably a lot of people would criticize him for doing that as well. But you you try to get tr- you get truthful, honest answers about what happened, and then he still always ends up turning it around to where it's a coaching thing. You, you got to coach harder. We got to do better. We got to make sure that's not an option. We're going to go to that one in just a second, but because I want to definitely dive into this fourth and one call a, a little bit more and, and really open your eyes to what was asked and, and what was said uh, specifically. But before we do that, we got to get we got to give a shout out to our boy Ford Stokes with Active Wealth Management. Uh, look, I know everybody has a four hundred one k. Everybody has a savings. 
But how do you know that that savings or that 401k or that whatever you have retirement plan is performing at an optimal level? It's reducing fees, needless fees. It's doing everything it can to keep you from being uh, pillaged by the IRS. You're protected from the IRS. Like there's all these certain things that you can't really know, honestly, until you talk to Ford Stokes. You may have an idea, but Ford Stokes will let you know right off the bat, hey, you could be doing this, you could be doing that, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. And he'd do that for you absolutely free. You check him out at retirementresults.com forward slash plan. Tell him more eagle, tell him I sent you and make a friend at the same time. That's Ford Stokes with retirement results presented by Active Wealth. Now let's talk about this infamous fourth down call. Okay. Uh, that was that seems to be the biggest talking point of of the whole, uh, I mean, of the whole game. And understandably so. You start, you come out, you're starting the fourth quarter. It's fourth and one. You're only down 11. You're close to midfield. You're not right at midfield, but you're close to midfield. You've had some success driving the ball. You bog down inside the, you know, the red zone a few times, but you pick this up. You pick up one yard. Who knows what happens? You have the ball. You have a full two quarters to try to, uh, you know, come back from an 11 score, 11 point deficit. Uh, and then you have what was we what was what we saw. You had the uh, confusion. You had the uh, what seemed like a uh, I, I don't I mean it's nothing more than confusion. You had the confusion, and then you had Peyton doing what he did. Uh, and obviously, it you got you, you took a huge you know you took a huge loss there as far as as far as yards go. Uh, and then it was basically over from there. Uh, there was no after that. It was really there was really no coming back. That was kind of the play of the game, uh, right there. And uh, it I don't want to say it didn't get executed uh, correctly, but I mean it was executed incorrectly of the way the play was called. Uh, so let's talk about what was asked because it seems like the narrative is Hugh walked in and said uh, that was unannounced. Un unprompted, it seems like if you just read Twitter and you just listen to the comments on social media and, and whatever, you would think that Hugh walked in and said, guys, I'm going to start off by saying that fourth and one was all Peyton's fault. Shouldn't have done that. You know, we didn't do we didn't call that blah, 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 blah. That's what you would think. Well, I just read you several quotes from the opening monologue, but this is what this is exactly the questions that were asked. And these were the answers. OK. Number one, this was how it started off. The fourth down call to start the fourth quarter. What was the call? What happened? That was the question. Hugh Free says, the call was dive left and we didn't execute that play. He didn't say Peyton didn't execute that play. He didn't say Peyton made up his own mind. He just said, we didn't execute that play. The call was dive left and we didn't execute that play. Follow up. It was not a read question mark. So what was it at? So it wasn't, you're saying it wasn't an actual read option. Free says no. Okay. So let's just take that part of it. Fourth and one, start the fourth quarter. What was the call? What happened? The call was dive left. We didn't execute that. What What is he supposed to say there? What is supposed to be the answer there? That's the part that, that I'm struggling with. Like, I don't know what else he's supposed to say there. He didn't name a player by name. He didn't say anything other than it was dive left and we didn't execute that play. And he said, we, he didn't say Peyton. He said, we, and, and obviously the follow-up, it wasn't a read. Like, so Peyton didn't have that option. He said, no, but he didn't name, nobody named name yet. There's no names been being thrown out. So that was the first question that was asked about that. And, up until this point, Peyton's name has not even been brought up, okay? Then there was three or four other questions asked in between. Again, Peyton's name is never brought up, okay? And then you go to the second part of the – somebody goes back in a little bit deeper on this, on this play. So he says, going back to the fourth and one, in your conversation with Peyton after, because it looks like obviously on the sidelines he's really mad, he's really heated at Peyton. Was it a busted play? What was your perspective on that? Okay. So tell us about the conversation. 
And what was your perspective on like what do you think happened? What, what's your what's your perspective of what happened during that play? And he says, "Yeah, um, he absolutely didn't go with what we called." That's the first time he said Peyton did not go with what we called. Peyton is a thinker, and he knows a lot of football, and he tried to go with a read there. And I think everyone was a little confused. We definitely weren't on the same page there, and I should have used one of our timeouts there when I saw things were going awry. That's something that we have to learn from and get better. We've got to coach better where that's not really an option in that moment of time. So he, so you're asked specifically what happens. He tells you specifically what happened. You can look at the play and, and look at where the blocking is and understand. And then look what Jarquez does after the play and understand that your quarterback did something out of the out of the the game plan. He took his he took sort of his own liberties to call his own play. Uh, and not only did he call his own play, it seemed like the play that he called there wasn't that option on that play. Uh, I have a guy a guy that's on our message board. I can't remember if he said he played at Liberty or if he his uh, or if someone he's related to played at Liberty called him immediately. After the game, if you're a member at the bar in Auburn.com, you probably saw this. Called him immediately, not after the game, after that play. He said, "He said there's no read on that play." I play. I mean, I, I take that back. It was. It was. I now know it was his brother. His brother played at Liberty. Played center at Liberty, actually. And he said his brother called him immediately after that play and said, "There is no read on that play. I know that play. That that the dive left." That is a – you leave the outside defender unblocked. That is a dive left, uh, and you got the numbers. The numbers were there. You look at the overhead shots. There's a gaping hole to the left. Uh, and Peyton – look, and, and honestly, he called it audible, and it looks like if you watch him, he's telling Jarquez, you know, what to do. Like he should – if you're calling an audible, why would he already not already know what to do? Like if, if it's something that's practice, if, if it's something that's part of it, that's not how you run a read option. If it, if it if it was a read option, then Jarquez would have dove left, pretending he had the ball so that you draw that defender. He didn't even do that. He 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 didn't know what to do. He took a step towards towards the defender, and the whole play was blown up. Uh, so again, Freeze is asked specifically, "What was your perspective on what happened there?" And he tells you, he tells you, this is what happened. We had a play called, and and Peyton just chose to do something else. So, I and and here's what he did: he complimented Peyton, said Peyton's a, a big thinker, and he 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 knows the game, and he feels like he saw something. But I have to coach better to make sure that that's not an option for him. I have to coach better so that he understands that that's not the that that's not a a viable option to do to go to deviate like that uh, in crunch time. Again, uh, uh, it's just I, when you watch the whole press conference, when you listen to the questions that are answered, that's what that's what do, you, do you, people do you realize that he's being asked questions in this thing? Do you think he's just going off cuff and just naming off all the people that suck, all the people that are making mistakes? No, they're asking him specific questions. They're asking him specific questions and he's giving very specific answers, which I appreciate. To be honest, I like knowing a lot of the schematic things about what's going on, and he'll go dive into it. He'll go straight into it. But even then, even in that, so he had a player that looked like he a player called his own play, and he says, I've got to coach better. I've got to coach better so that they know that that's not an option to call your own play. What, you, at what level should you – I mean – is that really something you should have to coach? I mean, I'm I'm just going to be honest. Is that really something that that needs to be addressed? Hey, when they call a play, you run the play. Uh, and, and if there's if there's not an option, clearly there's not. We've got people that played in this offense that are saying there is no read on that play. Hugh says there's no read on that play. It's a dive left. If you just run the play, uh, if if you change the play that's being run, I mean, there's really no other discussion to be had. Like what? What else can you say? Like you, you can. How can you even really coach somebody harder 
or better at that point to to not make up their own play in the dirt. Like it, that's just uh, that's the part that I really struggle with. I don't feel like people are are being honest with themselves, and, and this is where we're going to wrap this thing up. I don't feel like we're being honest. Um, we're pretending that I feel like we we're pretending that I think we're mad that it's we're two and four, and I get it. But we're not being honest with, with this whole situation. Uh, the the throwing the players under the bus, I think that's dishonest at best. I think it's dishonest at best, nefarious at worst. I think what you're doing is uh, – I don't want to say ignorant, okay, because I think you do – I think a lot of people do understand that uh, – and when I say ignorant, I mean ignorant that questions are being asked. I don't want to go there because I think you do know – questions are being asked and he in, in a press conference and he's answering those questions but the throwing the p- players under the bus I feel like is dishonest I think if if that's what the way you're characterizing it based off of everything that I just read and based off that 10 minute press conference and every press conference that that has been had other coaches say things like this all the time Saban when he benched Jalen Milrow said we've got to get away from the two uh d- the two plays a game that that kill us the two mistakes a game that are killer. And he said his two mistakes, his two mistakes a game that are killer. I mean, that's what he said after the Texas loss. That, that kind of stuff is said all the time. We just have four of four losses of, uh, you know, out of the first six games. So it's a lot of that. Uh, and it's always ends up being in response to a question that's asked. But I, I feel like even, even then he still always takes it back to coaching and we got to coach it harder. Uh, so I think we need to be a little bit more, uh, honest with ourselves. I think we need to to actually go in and, and watch a full press conference uh, today. He's going to have a press conference today. I'm I'm going to watch it and I'm going to listen to the questions that are asked. Uh, and and we're going to see. I think they're. I'm sure they're going to talk more about that fourth and one, and we'll see what see what he says. Uh, but again, I hate to keep harping on this, but dang, that's all the talk was on on social media. That's all the talk on message boards. Throwing players under the bus. This and Hugh doesn't ever take blame. And it's just untrue. It's 100% untrue. So, uh, guys, I really hope you uh, hope you had a great weekend, even with the loss. Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna battle through this uh, by a week. We're gonna have, still gonna have content every single day. Uh, hopefully, have some cool guests on this week. I hope you enjoyed Kale Ellis on last night, uh, and he's obviously we're we're excited about him. And they're still kind of pushing to finish off this class, and we'll see how that plays out. Uh, as well. Uh, if you like this video, like it. If you like this channel, subscribe to it. Sign up for The Barn, w, uh, thebarnauburn.com. Only a dollar for your first month. And you can follow me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five. You know we're going to be back every single day. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. Stay buttoned. Thanks for listening and drive home safely.